Hey guys, I'm Jacob. You are watching the Preppers Bunker Outdoors, and today I want to talk about this. The White River Knife and Tool Firecraft PKO, or PUKO. Uh, cool little knife. We're going to jump right into looking at the specs of this knife, and then I'll give a brief description and give you my thoughts, which will probably be not so brief. So, stick around and check it out. So the knife comes, as you see here, it comes with their multi-attachment style belt clip in a kydex sheath with a ferro rod. I think if a manufacturer includes a ferro rod holder that they should include a ferro rod, but that's just me. White River does a good job about that. Alright, on to the blade here. This is a custom uh, Puko 3.5 and the thing that's custom about it is the handle scales and there's a funny story about that that I'll tell you in a second here but overall you have a true zero uh, standy grind on here I haven't seen a lot of manufacturers offer a true zero standy grind on S35VN I'm not sure if I know of any especially in the states uh, this grind thickens out near the tip so you can see near the tip it's a relatively thick grind and the reason for that is there are a lot of benefits to having a zero grind, but the primary drawback to that is you don't have as much meat behind the edge, which means your edge is a lot weaker than it would be with a micro bevel. Um, but a tr any Scandi grind that does not have a zero grind isn't really a Scandi grind anyways, and there are a lot of benefits to it. I have beat on a prototype of this knife with this zero grind and was exceptionally pleased with how it held up. So the handle scales, these again, custom rag micarta, but you get a nice bow drill divot. Um, the ring on the end, this is not some kind of tactical fighty boy ring. This is just to make drawing the knife easier if it's down in a bag or something like that. It's nicely chamfered all the way around. Uh, the ferro rod notch is more shallow than what you might uh, traditionally be used to on firecraft knives. The reason for that is a small ferro rod notch cannot scrape a large ferro rod effectively, but a large ferro rod notch can scrape a small ferro rod uh, effectively. So that's what you get with that. Um, all in all, you can use the bow drill divot while the knife is in the sheath for safety. I've used these bow drill divots in the past and I will use it for the full review on this knife. They are very handy to have when you want to make a bow drill. And uh, really, this is just a very unique and very premium design. Uh, the designer is Jason Teets and all of his stuff is just very, very well thought out. So what are my overall first impressions of the knife? Well, the first thing that comes to mind for me, or for almost, I think, anybody holding this knife, is the fit and finish and the attention to details. Absolutely fantastic. That's what White River Knife and Tool has become known for, and the uh, Firecraft uh, PKO is no exception. Um, now, a little bit different than what most people may think of when it comes to value is if you look at an SE Azula, this is actually, with handle scales on it, or an Azula 2, this is actually a very similarly sized knife uh, as compared to the Azula, especially the Azula 2, similar weight, um, but you're getting from the factory a very nice Kydex sheath, you're getting a ferro rod, you've got a ferro rod notch, so you don't have to worry about squaring off the spine. Uh, the scales come on the knife, they're absolutely premium, everything about it is very premium. So you could almost imagine this knife being something similar to how a person might set up an SE Azula uh, with all of the custom aftermarket stuff that they would want, except you get this directly from the factory. I guess we're having some emergencies here. Um, and when you look at it that way, it's an incredible value, I think. Um, actually, in fact, I'll say no matter how you look at it, it's an incredible value for a production knife, White River Knife and Tool, just really knocks it out of the park. And if you want that, you've got to pay for it. Uh, and then the other thing is, your, your Azula is not going to be a zero ground Scandi. 
So if you've ever imagined yourself wanting an Azula but wanting to know what it would be like in a Scandi, uh, that's what you get here. If you've wanted a modernized Puko that's full tang with a modern carry system and modern amenities, then there you go. Um, this is, I think, a, a fairly unique uh, size belt knife uh, and it offering unique features for its category, especially when you consider American manufacturer. So um, I, I think that this is a, a fantastic blade. The edge is just so silly sharp. And um, I think if a person wanted a knife to abuse, however, this wouldn't be the first one I'd recommend. No matter how tough White River Knife and Tools S35VN steel is, um, it is S35VN, it is a zero grind, so if you're wanting a knife to be your go-to pry on, beat on, uh, scrape tile grout, pry tile off of the floor, that kind of stuff, this would not be the knife that I'd recommend, but for a, a woods knife, it's, it's so unique in the market and so well done uh, that I think it's going to be hard to match. Now, real quick, the elephant in the room is these, these handle scales. So I had an opportunity to grab um, a Firecraft uh, Puko at Blade Show. And so I was looking at the custom, custom handle scale options, and one of the guys uh, pulled this out and was like, said something to the effect of, hey, why hasn't this knife been out? And one of the other guys laughed and said something like, Oh, that's the clown knife. And I looked at it and I was like, that is so ugly. I love it. Hey, stop it, Kimber. She's chewing on the leather sheath of another knife that I've got. She's ridiculous. No, you can't have that. That's off limits. Sorry. You're surrounded by leaves. Eat them. No. No. So, you know, when you've got a knife with wood scales and a leather sheath, as opposed to synthetic materials and super steels, uh, maybe your animals are going to want to eat them. Maybe you should consider that. Anyways, that is on my belt. That's the Hella Viking that she's wanting to munch on. You're, you're a goofball. Remember, you're a goof. Anyways, so, um, yeah, so I was like, man, it's so ugly. I want it. Oddly enough, also, this is serial number 13. So they called it the clown knife with clown scales with this multicolored uh, rag micarta, serial number 13. I had to grab it. I love it. Um, I think it's going to be good for grabbing some attention on YouTube videos, but also it's very different than what I already have. I already have a whole lot of normal bush colored knives. And I thought finally that it would be a unique option for a high vis handle. And this is a knife that I think deserves a high vis handle. This is the kind of belt knife that um, is likely to be with you on an adventure, even if it's an unexpected adventure, because it's so easy to carry every day. I don't think that currently White River Knife and Tool has a high vis option for the handles outside of the custom shop. I think they're doing OD Green Canvas Micarta. Don't quote me on that. But, uh,. I think, I think it's a design that deserves a full production high-vis option. Um, and whether or not they do that is probably going to come down to whether or not it would sell. But if the knife industry was an industry of Mies, uh, that would certainly be an option on the table. The last thing I want to mention that I haven't looked too much at or talked about too much is this slot in the top here. I think I can get a piece of one-inch webbing through that. And so I'm thinking what I might be able to do with this knife is get it on a backpack strap or something like that. Uh, for carry, we will see. But um, I'm excited for the long-term review of this knife. I'm excited for the adventures I think that I will have with it. How I see myself using this knife um, is doing two, three primary things. Uh, two of them are kind of very closely related. One is making fires uh, and... Two is um, preparing fish to eat specifically, and three is general food prep. Those are the tasks that I see myself using this knife for the most. And I guess I should say number four would be carving. 
Uh, I like to do a little bit of carving, but I don't do a whole lot of it, I guess. So I'm gonna say I'm gonna say three tasks. Uh, fire, fire prep, fire making, food prep, and carving. Um, so that should entail um, a lot of carving for feather sticks or carving. It will entail a little bit of batoning, even though it has the zero degree edge, and you guys will see whether or not that zero degree edge will stand up to that. And if it doesn't, you know that I'll show it to you. If this knife utterly fail, fails and breaks, you will see it here. That's just the rule with anything that I do, even with custom super expensive knives that you think I shouldn't be using in that manner. If it fails, I'm going to show you. Um, but uh, anyways, we're going to wrap this up here, guys. Let me know what you think about this knife in the comment section below. I'm really excited about it. I'm glad that White River Knives has taken it on. I think that Jason Teets is the guy to design it. And uh, it's cool to have a knife in this size on the market that's so unique because we have a whole lot. In this size range, we have a whole slew of knives that are all offering pretty much the exact same thing. You know, drop point, uh, high saber grind or full flat grind, uh, similar sized handle, similar thickness handle, a bunch of the same stuff. It's cool to see something unique coming from White River Knife and Tool. Uh, and it's also cool because they do such a doggone good job. So anyways, once again, I'll talk to you in the comment section below. Check out the description box below if you'd like to see how you can support this channel through my Patreon, through my own uh, businesses, Beach and Tactical and Exodus Knife and Tool, through my affiliate links with Brownells or Palmetto State Armory, uh, through even just my social media links. Go ahead and check all of that out. Thanks for being here, and uh, I'll talk to you.